Hi everyone, welcome back. In previous lecture, we pretty much understood what is Spring Boot. Well, Spring Boot is a opinionated framework that helps developer to build Spring-based applications quickly and easily. The main goal of Spring Boot is quickly create a Spring-based applications without requiring developers to write the same boilerplate configuration again and again. Okay, and Spring Boot is developed on top of Spring Framework to address different problems. In this lecture, let's understand Spring Boot provided important features such as Spring Boot starters, Spring Boot auto configuration, externalized configuration, Spring Boot actuator, easy to use embedded servlet container support. So let's understand these Spring Boot features in detail. Let's take a look into Spring Boot starters. Well, Spring Boot starters are free configured with the most commonly used library dependencies so you don't have to search for a compatible library versions and configure them manually. For example, Spring Boot provides Spring Boot Starter Data JPS Starter module. So this module includes all the dependencies required to use Spring Data JPA along with Hibernate library dependencies as Hibernate is the most commonly used JPA implementation. Well, Spring Boot provides Spring Boot Starter Data JPA Starter module and this module will internally pull all the Spring Data JPA and Hibernate related dependencies from the internet and it will internally manage the compatible versions of all these dependencies. Okay. Next one more example is Spring Boot Starter Web Dependency. So Spring Boot provides Spring Boot Starter Web Dependency to develop the Spring ABC application and this starter dependency will internally pull all the commonly used libraries while developing Spring ABC applications such as Spring Web MUC, Jackson JSON, Validation API and Tomcat. Okay, so this is awesome, right? So instead of adding all the Spring MUC related dependencies such as Spring Web MUC, Jackson JSON, Validation API and Tomcat, we can simply use this single Spring Boot Starter Web dependency. This dependency will internally pull all these dependencies and it will manage the versions of all these dependencies, right? For example, if you go to the project Spring MUC Hibernate Crude Web App, so this project was developed using Spring Framework and if you go to Prompt XML file, so here we have added lot of Spring MUC and Hibernate related dependencies and we have manually managed the versions of all these dependencies. Okay, so basically the problem with this approach is we need to manually take care of managing the compatible versions of all these dependencies. Okay, so Spring Boot provides a starter dependencies to automatically manage the compatible versions of all these dependencies. So just remember Spring Boot starters are free configured with most commonly used library dependencies. So you don't have to search for a compatible library versions and configure them manually. Spring Boot starters will take care of you know, managing the compatible versions of all the dependencies. Next let us take a look into Spring Boot auto configuration feature. Well Spring Boot auto configuration attempts to automatically configure Spring application based on the jar dependencies that you have added to the project. Well, basically Spring based applications have a lot of configurations. For example, whenever you develop a Spring MUC application using Spring Framework, then you need to manually configure the dispatcher survey to view observer. And if you use Hibernate in that Spring MUC application, then again, you need to configure the data source, entity manager and transaction manager as well, right? For example, here we have Spring MUC Hibernate crude web application developed using Spring Framework. And the problem with this application is that they have to configure a lot of stuff like we have to configure the session factory bin, we have to configure data source and transaction manager bin and we have to configure the resolver bin, we have to configure the dispatcher servlet. Alright, so basically we have to provide a lot of configuration, isn't it? Next, let us say we want to create a one more new Spring MUC Hibernate Code Web application. Then we have to provide the same configuration again, isn't it? So instead of configuring the same configuration again and again, why not we automate this configuration? So this is what the Spring Boot auto configuration feature provides a solution. Okay, so Spring Boot will automatically configure all these Spring Beans whenever we add a jar dependency in a pom.xml file. For example, Spring Boot provides a lot of starter dependencies. The commonly used ones are Spring Boot Starter Web and Spring Boot Starter Data JPA. So let's say we add a Spring Boot Starter Web jar dependencies to our Spring Boot project then Spring Boot assumes that you are trying to build a Spring MUC based application and it tries to automatically register Spring Beans like Dispatcher Servlet and View Observer if it is not already registered. 
Next, one more example is like let's say if we add Spring Boot starter data, JPA starter dependency to our project, then Spring Boot automatically configure the Hibernate related Spring Beans such as data source, session factory, and transaction manager. Right, so this is awesome, right? We just have to add the starter dependency to our project. Spring Boot will take care of automatically configuring the related Spring Beans. Okay, so Spring Boot auto configuration attempts to automatically configure Spring application based on the Java dependencies that you have added to the project. All right, so this is how the Spring Boot auto configuration works. Next feature is externalized configuration. Well, Spring Boot provides good support to externalize the configuration. For example, typically we deploy Spring applications in different environments such as production environment, testing environment, UAT environment, or development environment, right? So in order to deploy Spring application in different environments, so we have to externalize the configuration based on the environments, right? So Spring Boot provides a good support to externalize the configurations based on the different environments. Next feature is Spring Boot Actuator. Well, Spring Boot Actuator provides a wide variety of production ready features without requiring developers to write much code. It means Spring Boot Actuator provides out of the box REST endpoints as a production ready features. Like we can use Spring Boot Actuator provided REST APIs to view the application bin configuration details. We can use Spring Boot Actuator REST APIs to view the application URL mappings, environment details, and configuration parameter values. We can also use Spring Boot Actuator REST endpoints to view the registered health check metrics as well. Okay, so Spring Boot Actuator basically offers a lot of REST endpoints that we can use as a production ready features. Next feature is easy to use embedded servlet container support. Well, traditionally, in order to deploy the web application, we were building the war file and then we were deploying that war file in external server such as Tomcat server. But by using Spring Boot, you can create a jar file out of the Spring application and then you can deploy that jar file in a embedded servlet container. Well, let's understand this feature with an example. So here in a IntelliJ idea, I have created a Spring MUC Hibernate crude web application using Spring framework. Next, in order to deploy this Spring Hibernate project in a Tomcat server, then what we have to do is we have to download the Tomcat server from the internet and then we need to set up that Tomcat server in the IntelliJ idea and then we can be able to deploy this project in the Tomcat server. So this is the manual process, right? But using Spring Boot, what we can do is we can simply create a jar file out of the Spring Boot application and we can simply deploy that jar file in a embedded Tomcat server. So these are the important Spring Boot features and we are going to explore these features a lot throughout this course. Alright, great. I will see you in the next lecture.